Hello again, YouTube. It's midsummer here on the East Coast. You're probably going to hear the cicadas in the background singing their song. Once again, here's my 1994 Jetta GLX in the garage. Got a small problem. Hopefully, this will be a short video for you today. Got a problem with my cruise control. The cruise control no longer engages. Had this happen before, and it was intermittent. Now it won't engage at all. So we're going to go through the diagnostic procedure and see if we can figure out what's wrong. It's a quick overview of the diagram from my uh, repair manual. This is the accelerator pedal with a uh, throttle control diaphragm here. It's a vacuum controlled system. Down here is the, uh, the vacuum pump. The heart of the system here and number four is the cruise control module, the ECM. That's the electronic module. It has an electronic board in it. That's what was wrong last time. I had to re-solder a uh, cold solder joint on that. Uh, I expect that might be what the problem is again. And here's the troubleshooting chart with the steps we we're going to go through to see if we can diagnose what's wrong with the system. To begin with, I've removed the lower covers and the cover over the, uh, the fuse box. The control module, electronic control module, is right here behind the dash. The first thing I did after getting the covers out of the way is to reach up there and uh, disconnect this connector. The majority of the uh, initial troubleshooting steps is to probe the connectors on here and make sure that we're getting voltage and the proper signals to diagnose where our problem is. So on this connector, the uh, terminals are labeled uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 on this side. And on this side, left to right, we've got... 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So the first test is to make sure that we have battery voltage on terminal number 9. So I hooked up and turned on my cheap uh, volt ohm meter here and connected ground to a screw up here on the dashboard. And using a paper clip, small paper clip, I'm probing terminal number 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ignition key turned on. I'm going to turn the switch on on the column. See, And sure enough, we have 12 volts supplied to the system. So that's a successful first step. Step two is to test for ECU grounds, whatever that means. And we're looking for voltage across terminals nine and four. So I've got the ground in four right now. The ignition switch is on and the cruise control switch is on. So let's touch number nine. Indeed, we have voltage there. Second check for ECU ground is voltage between terminal 12 and nine. Here's 12 over here, and back to 9 here. A little twitchy, but yeah, good test for voltage. Now we're going to test the set function on the switch. You can see that the system is on, and this is the set button. Let's so press that. So we're going to be probing those two terminals while pressing the set button to see if that is functioning properly. All right, I'm probing terminals 4 and 8 to test the set switch. System is on. I'm going to press the set switch now. Yeah, it looks like that's working. we got good 12 volts using the set switch. The next thing it wants us to test is the resume function. That's when you take the switch and hold it to the left from the on position like that. So we'll be testing resume. Resume is... Terminals 4 and 5. I'm just going to try and hand hold these rather than using the paper clip. I think I can do that with one hand. 4 is back there. 5 is up front. So I can hold both of those and then reach up here. Turn the system on. And then hold the resume button. So resume. And release. Looks like resume is working. Well, Alright, on to the next step. Step five is to test the brake pedal switch and clutch pedal switch. That's achieved by probing terminals three and nine. All right, I'm on three and nine. I'm going to turn on the system. We should have voltage. I'm going to reach in and depress the brake pedal. Indeed, that does disrupt the voltage. Restore the brake pedal. Depress the brake pedal. That seems to be functioning. Let's now do the clutch pedal. We have voltage. Depressing the pedal. And we do not have voltage. Release the pedal, we do have voltage. So it appears that the clutch and brake pedal switches are working correctly. Step six is to test the uh, vehicle speed sensor. To do that, we have to spin the front wheel. I've got the jack underneath the car, so I can reach around here and give the wheel a spin. And we'll set up the probes to test that. So now I'm probing terminal seven and four to test the wheel speed sensor. When I rotate the wheel, it should change between 
uh, high voltage range of 7 to 12 volts down to a low voltage range of 0 to 4 volts. So we're, we're at 10 volts, about halfway between the 7 and 12 volt high range. And we should see it drop down to the 0 to 4 volt low range. Let me go spin the wheel. Now the voltage did jump around on me when I was, as I was spinning the wheel and I even spun at a few different speeds. It didn't clearly go from a high to a low voltage range, it just kind of jumped around. But because of the fact that the speedometer still works and we are getting a change there, I'm going to, I'm pretty confident that, that the speed sensor is fine in that regard. Step 7 is a series of tests that does not require the volt ohm meter. This, these steps are to test different uh, parts of the, the vacuum system. and Perform these tests, we have to jumper several terminals, that is, uh, connect one or more terminals together, and then perform a series of tests. We're going to jumper three sets of terminals. What I've done is I've taken a uh, thin paper clip and cut it in half and made it into a loop. And the first pair of terminals we're going to jumper are 9 and 11. By the way, I have the ignition off right now, so there's no power here. So I just stick it in between 9 and 11 and complete the circuit. So there we have 9 and 11 probed or jumpered rather. There we have 1 and 4 jumpered and then we have 2 and 4 2 and 4 jumpered. So 9 to 11 1 to 4 and 2 to 4. So now with those all jumpered in place, hopefully they're making a good connection, we'll know soon enough we can uh, perform the tests. With the jumpers in this position, we're going to uh, turn on the ignition key, which it already is. Then I'm going to turn on the uh, cruise control, and we should hear the vacuum pump run, and we should see the, uh, the accelerator pedal go to the floor. The throttle will fully open. And indeed, the throttle pedal now has gone to the floor, and it's fully open. Now we're going to test the vacuum vent valves on the brake pedal and clutch pedal. When you depress the brake pedal, the uh, the vent valve should open and the throttle should fully close. Watch the uh, accelerator pedal. And indeed, the accelerator pedal came up. Let the accelerator go back down. And I'll do the same with the clutch to make sure the relief valve on the clutch pedal does the same. Indeed, it does. Now, with the vacuum pump still running and the throttle fully open and to the floor, I'm going to remove the jumper from terminals 2 and 4, the vacuum pump should stop running, but the accelerator pedal should remain on the floor. So let's pull that jumper. And indeed, the pump stopped running and the throttle remains on the floor. Now I'm to remove the remaining two jumpers, and we should see the throttle pedal uh, rise and fully close. And that is successful as well. Back to the diagram just to look here. These are the two uh, vacuum vent valves that we were testing by depressing the clutch and uh, brake pedal to see if that would uh, interrupt the, the throttle. Uh, but after completing all of those tests and they all pass successfully, as I expected, the fault is in all likelihood here with the uh, cruise control module. So I'm going to remove that. So back here into the dash, disregard this. This is just my crossover from my speaker system. Uh, the, the ECU is on a bracket up here that's shared by the alarm system control module and the alarm system module has two electrical connectors connected to it so I reached up under the dash and uh, disconnected those so now we have to remove the bracket that uh, those two modules share and that's held on by one nut right here yeah, not so tight I'm going to pop out these indicators and controls and see if I can gain better access to that module rather than accessing it from the bottom. Just press this little tab to release the headlight switch. With the headlight switch and the airbag light out of the way, that silver box sitting in there, I've kind of moved it around and turned it, and you can see that Phillips head screw that's attaching it to the bracket where it's uh, mated against the uh, the alarm system uh, control unit. 
So there's no real good way to take that whole assembly down through the bottom. It's just too big to fit past the fuse box and wiring and all. This. So what I plan to do is to hold it, reach in there, and, and remove that Phillips screw. Then I can remove down through the bottom. So here's the ECU. This one has some padded foam tape on it, so you can't even read the read the lettering on it. It's held shut by these uh, areas where the aluminum case is bent over the plastic of the of the cap. So we're going to open those up and slide it out. So I'm going to get in here with uh, a screwdriver and just bend those back a little bit. Doesn't take much, it's pretty soft aluminum. I've been in here before. So these are these things experience a common problem with the solder joints on the on the board inside. And it's common on this generation of Volkswagens and Audis. In fact, uh, you'll even see on eBay that uh, there's a guy or two that will accept these if you mail them to him. He'll do exactly what we're doing here, and he'll get inside and he'll fix a bad solder joint, or maybe he'll even, even repair a bad capacitor or whatever he finds inside. But I've been in this one before and actually done a repair before on a bad solder joint. So now with those loose, you can take this cap off. And the board should just slide right out of that slot. So there's your board. The electrical connections are on this end. Looks like it has some integrated circuits. You see these three red capacitors are apparently common areas for the uh, solder connections to be bad. It's also a relay right here. That's what clicks when uh, the cruise control engages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this really closely under some high magnification and see if I can identify what might be an obvious bad solder joint. So I took a closer look at that board and decided I wasn't going to attempt to repair it and potentially make it worse. So I bought this replacement one off of eBay. In fact, let me give a shout out to my new friend Greg. Here's his uh, seller ID on eBay, V-A-L-E-V-U-E. -E. He's got a repair service where he'll take your core in exchange for a working one. In fact, he mailed this to me before he even received the one that I sent to him. So kudos to Greg and uh, check him out and uh, send him your order if you've got the same problem. I think this is, and he had a really, really good price too. So our next step is to take this uh, new module or replacement module, pop it in the car and see how it works. So I've taken my replacement cruise control module and just plugged it in temporarily to the connector I've got hanging down from the uh, under the dash. And I grounded the case to a screw up here on the on the dashboard and gave it a test drive and we have success. It engages correctly and my cruise control is fixed. Installation is a reverse of the disassembly so I'm not going to bother showing you that. Again thanks to Greg on eBay for supplying this repaired uh, module. I'll put a link to his storefront on uh, the description below. Please subscribe. I've got other projects planned for this old girl so stay tuned. Thanks and see you next time.